I remember way back in grade three, we would have this kid who would, you know, whenever we would like be walking outside on a field trip, whenever he would see a fat person, he would like point and laugh hysterically. Now in a similar manner, right? We can point at things in Roblox with our mouse, right? And I, I have a game, which is like, it's like teleport simulator or like something like that. So you can, you know, just browse, um, browse my videos, just, you know, find it. And how the game, how, what the game has, a feature that the game has, which many people ask me to showcase, or like show them how to do is when you drag the mouse around it it has like this like beam from the player all the way to where the mouse is and people are like oh how do you do this okay so let me show you so what i did was i did all of this inside a local script by the way right because i only want this to be shown to my player i don't want other players to see like you know like my beam right if you want to you know you can use a server script but I assume you only want the player to see, you know, where their mouse is pointing. So I did this in a local script. So I added a local script inside starter player scripts, like so. And the first thing we need to do is we need to make sure that the player, we need to, we need to understand, like, how do we get the mouse's position, right? Like, like how do we know that, okay, the, the mouse is pointing in this lo location? What we do is we can say local mouse is equal to and I believe it's like um game dot let me just let me just check real quick yeah okay yeah so um yeah so you say game dot players dot local player get mouse like so I believe you could also do workspace dot oh no wait no that's for that's for the camera I'm stupid yeah so the way you get the mouse is you say game dot player dot local or game dot players dot local player get mouse which, in fact, I believe you can only do this on a local script, okay? So forget what I said about the server script. This can only be done locally, because local player is for local scripts. You cannot get the local player on the server script, because the server script is for the server, right? But the local script is for players. Uh, if, that, if that made no sense, I have a video. Uh, it's like a clickbait title. It's like uh, Roblox Exploits or something, where I just explain the difference. Um, but the way we get the mouse... Um, like position is we say mouse i think it's dot hit dot position i believe it's this yeah so basically this will return the actual position of where the mouse has hit so what we could do is we could say we because we wanted to probably keep on updating right like we, like we wanted to you know every single frame or every single tick we just wanted to update where our mouse position is and then you know position like the, the beam or whatever accordingly the way we do this is we use a service called render stepped. I know I just said a lot of words, but just follow along and I promise you'll understand. Just make a variable called rs and make it equal to game get service. Um, or no, wait, no, not. Uh, yeah, run service. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, so game dot get yeah game colon get service or run service. Then say rs so r meaning run service dot render stepped. Okay. Um, or no, wait. Render step or heartbeat. Let's see. Uh, you could use whatever. I think the difference, yeah. So what render step does is it fires every frame, but it fires before the frame is actually like rendered, right? Rendered as in shown. But heartbeat, it fires every frame, but after all of like the physics simulation has completed, right? So if you want to make sure that all the physics, like are you know like done and everything. Then you, then you would use heartbeat um but the issue with that is that like you know sometimes physics might take like a little like long to calculate so like it might you know slow like it's not going to be like noticeably slow but it might slow down at certain points so i will use render step just because it's the quickest one but you, you can use either one it's fine then you connect it so whenever and whenever a new frame fires uh we, we will connect it to a function like so so basically, all this is saying is like, okay, every single frame, what do we do? And let's just print out the mouse position, okay? Let's just print out mouse.hit.position. Yeah, there we go. So every single frame, it's going to print out the position of the mouse. Yep, there we go. So as you can see in the output, yeah, whenever I... So when my mouse is still, it keeps on printing it out, right? And as you can see, the closer that I move my mouse to the player... Yeah, as you can see, so so when I move it far away, it's like, oh, one, like 200, 100, right? But when I move it closer to, you know, the world origin, then it's at zero. 
So you know that, that that's pretty cool. There we go. Nice. Okay. Yeah. So we know we know that works, right? So let's not print it. Okay. What if what if something that we could do is what if we want to make a a part? Okay. So what I can do is I can say local. Oh wait, local part is equal to instance dot new part. Okay. And what I'll do is I'll I'll parent this part to actually no first what I'll do is I'll say part dot transparency is equal to uh, zero point five so we'll make it semi transparent okay and then what I'll do is I'll say part dot um, position is equal to mouse dot hit dot position like so and I'll also say part dot anchored equals true so it doesn't just you know so it's not affected by gravity and then I'll also say part dot can collide is equal to false there we go and because we're creating this part in a local script only our player will be able to see this part okay so other players will not be able to see this part and yeah so i believe what this will do is every single frame it's gonna so it's gonna create the part at first and then every single frame is just gonna update the parts position to be where our mouse is oh you know what you know what I, you know what probably happened i forgot oh okay i forgot to actually parent the part so parent.workspace, because if you just create and you don't parent it to anything, it's not going to be visible. So we have to actually set the parent to be workspace so that the part is visible. And I believe this will hopefully fix the issue. Oh, fascinating. Look, look, look at it go. How cool is that? So I, be I believe what's going on is that the part um, is like it's detecting itself and so it's flying towards the camera so i th what we actually should do as well is we need to say part dot can carry is false and what can carry means basically like okay yeah the mouse can go through the part right um so i, I believe this will fix the issue so let me see yep there we go yep awesome yeah so now we actually know okay we we so like it works right so we actually know where the position of the mouse is. You know, that's that's pretty cool. And the very, you know, last thing we need to do is just m make a beam. And the way beams work, by the way, in case you don't know, so I, I have a whole video on them, but beams require two attachments. And the way you make attachments is you have two parts. You have an attachment in both, like so. And then with, for the beam, you just say, oh yeah, attachment zero is this, attachment one is this, and it just creates this beam, okay? That's it. And you can, you can also make it like face the camera if you want. That That's all. So what we need is we just need to make sure that, okay, you know, we have um, one part with an attachment that's going to be the, the part that's moving with our mouse. And then we need another part that's going to be inside of our player. Now, we know that the pl every player has a humanoid root part, okay? It's called humanoid root part. So we, we have the part that moves around, right? And what I will do is I will um, I will actually create the beam as well. So I'll say local beam is equal to actually no wait now what I'll do first is I'll say local attachment attachments part is equal to instance dot new uh, attachment and I'll I'll set set its parent to be the part okay so uh, if when you when you create a new item you can actually separate with a comma the name. And then you could say what parent you want it to be parented to. So I want this attachment to be inside of this part, right? And then what I'll do is I'll say local uh, attachments player, and I'll say game dot players dot local player dot character uh, wait for child humanoid roots part. Okay. Or wait, no, hold on. That's the parent. So instance.new attachment, there we go. Yeah. So, so all I'm doing here is I'm saying, okay, I'm making one attachment that's gonna be inside of this part that we just created. And I'm, I'm making a second attachment that's gonna be inside the, the center of the player, right? So the player's character, every character has a part called humanoid root part. So I'm just making our own attachment that's gonna be inside of there. And then what I'm, I'm gonna make a beam called instance.new beam, and I'll parent it to I'll parent it to the um, the part. Okay, Let, let's let's parent it to the part, and then what I'll do is I'll say beam dot face camera is equal to true, and then I'll say beam dot attachment 
0 is equal to uh, attachment part, and then beam dot attachment 1 is equal to attachment player. And as a final thing, as a final thing, we could set the part's transparency to be fully 1, so we make the part fully invisible. And now, if I play the game, after all of that is done, attempt to index nil with wait for child. Okay, so what might have happened here is that the... Um, okay, okay, I see. So the, pl the, <laughs> the player's character hasn't loaded yet, so that's why it can't find the... Um, that's why it can't find the humanoid root part. So what I'll actually do is I'll say local character, like so, is equal to um, game dot players dot local player character oh wait no no dot character added wait yeah so basically we're gonna wait until the character is added and then once it's added this variable is gonna be equal to the player's character so what I could do is I could just say instead of this line I'll just say character okay so I, I think this will work I'm not too sure but let's see Oh, oh, my mouse is a little bugged. Yeah, there we go. That's it. <laughs> We're done. <laughs> there you go, boys. There, there's your, uh, there's your amazing beam. Yeah, the, the, the mouse sometimes will, like, freeze because, like, Roblox is having issues right now, but, like, there we go, yeah. And if you, if you want to actually, you know, make it, like, an arrow, so, like, I, I had mine be an arrow, right? Um, let me just showcase this as a quick example. Uh, attachment this, attachment this. There we go. If you want it, if you want the beam to be an actual arrow, I would just look up something like arrow, right? Just find you know whatever arrow you want. Um, like maybe, maybe maybe this. I don't know. Copy the asset ID and then in the beam, just make the texture equal to this. Okay, and then maybe texture um, texture length you can change as well. Yeah, so what we would need to do is we need to set the texture length to be 5 and texture speed to be negative 1, okay? So for the beam, I will say uh, beam dot texture length is equal to 5 and then beam dot texture speed is equal to negative 1. And then I'll actually say, okay, yeah, the texture, so I'll copy this and I'll say beam dot texture, no, wait, dot texture is equal to this right so it has to be a string so this is the texture so if i'll just if i just <laughs> oh wait no what did i do okay if i just delete the beam delete both both of the parts and then i run the game right now so i'll just close the script if i run the game right now it should have be an arrow there we go okay is it is it a, okay it's small issue <laughs> but it's fine um I actually do wonder why it's doing that. Let me see. I th yeah, because like when it's really far, like the you know the, the arrows are very like weird. Maybe it's texture mode. Yep. Okay, it's texture mode. Yeah. So set texture mode to be static. Okay. So let's actually do do that right now, just so it doesn't stretch because that that looks weird. So beam dot texture mode, which is an enum dot texture mode. So enum dot texture mode dot Static. There we go. So now, for the final time, if I play the game, we're gonna get this, um... Yeah, yeah, we're gonna get this very amazing, very cool, very awesome... Arrow, arrow texture. Look how cool that looks. And then, yeah, you know, you can change the color, you can, you know, find a different texture, you can make your own texture, you know, you can change the speed if you want. But there we go, that's kind of the basic idea of making an arrow, and this will be, this will look different for every person, right? So the great part about the script is that every single person will have their own version of this arrow, and they, they're not going to see, like, the arrows of other people, right? Um, so that, you know, that that is pretty nice. And yeah, so that's basically it. So I'm going to delete the script, and, or actually no, you know what I'll do? I'm going to... 
I guess I could, like, you know, download the script as a file and then put that in the description. But nah, you know what? Too much work. Too much work. Here we go, bro. Just, I don't know, take a screenshot and then, like, you can copy text from a screenshot, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, just do that. Screenshot this, copy the text, just paste it, you know, if you don't want to bother yourself with writing all this lengthy 27 lines of code. Um, but yeah, we are back to basics. Thank you for watching.